Hi there. Within Microsoft Intune and Endpoint Manager, you can configure your applications to either be required or available for enrolled devices. But I've been looking at ways in which you can enhance this capability. How can you make applications available where users can either opt in or request access? So in today's video, we're going to look at how we might do this using access packages. I firstly want to show you a couple of uh, blog posts by uh, Roy Jamalia and um, Peter Vanderwald. Now these are great blogs um, and I did consider doing a, doing a demonstration of this where they're showing using access packages to opt into Windows 11 and that's the same for Roy here so opt into Windows 11 and that's a great idea and I think it's really worth looking at. So I didn't want to repeat this um, when they've done such good work. So go ahead and take a look at those websites and they're really informative. So that's why I've chosen instead to look at um, using access packages for opting into an application instead. Now if we hop over to the uh, Microsoft Endpoint Manager for a second, um, I'm gonna go into the applications uh, for Windows and I'm going to pick an application here. I, I pick PowerPoint. And if we look at the properties, you'll see that you've got the options here for required, available for enrolled devices, and uninstalled. But there's not an opt in option. So I thought this would be a really good way of seeing how someone, an end user, might make a request in order to kind of gain access or download that application. The first thing we need to do is make sure we've got a group, okay, and a group that basically uh, has no end users in it, because essentially this uh, this group will eventually populate the end users that opt in to download this application and they're granted access. So we create a security group here. For this one, I'm going to use the 7-zip. Uh, opt-in app I've named it and there's no members in here at the moment okay the next thing I need to do is go over to the actual application itself that we're going to allow users to opt into um, and I've chosen the 7-zip application um, look at the properties and make sure that we're going to add a group into this um, into the assignments as required. Well, we're going to pick the um, seven zip group here, opt in. Going to select that. And why are we doing this? Well, what we want to do is make sure as as users opt in to install this application, they will be populated within the seven zip opt in uh, um, opt in app group. And if we've set it to be required. In the actual application itself it will automatically in the background install that application on their device our next step is go into your um, Azure tenant we're going to select the over in Microsoft Azure select your Active Directory and then go into identity governance and then you'll have an option under entitled management called access packages now uh, you can see I had one in here earlier, I was testing the Windows 11 opt-in approval, but this time we're going to do something different. So we're going to create a new access package. I'm going to give it um, a user 7-zip seven, seven opt-in. And we're going to put a description in here because it's uh, mandatory. So. I'm just going to copy that. Now, the next option is catalogs. Now, a catalog is a container, effectively, that contains a number of resources and access packages. There is, by default, you'll get general. So if you want to create something new, uh, in this case, I do. So I want to create a new catalog, and I'm going to call it 7-zip. Uh, opt-in and this is going to be a simple 
um, uh, a simple access package because it's only going to contain the application but in theory you can add a number of resources to your catalog that might be user groups um, and other, multiple applications for example now the other options we've got here we want to make sure that it's enabled um, and you can make a choice whether you want to include external users and I'm going to say no for that so I'll create this um, need to put a description in there obviously otherwise it won't let me create so I'm going to create this catalog uh, and that's successful and it's chosen it in, as part of my option here so next we're going to go into uh, resource roles and in this particular case what we're trying to achieve is make sure that any end user wanting to install this application um, has that ability and is added to the 7 zip group that we created within um, Intune. So in this particular case we're not going to add the application or, um, or the SharePoint site we're just going to add a group. It is worth mentioning though at this point that if you were to select the the application resource role this is um, specifically for um, Azure AD automatically assignment of users access to Azure AD enterprise applications right which includes both uh, software as a service applications and your organization applications um, which are integrated with Azure AD. The main purpose there is that with access packages you can define the period of time um, that that user is going to have access to that package and this might be a time permitting thing so you're only uh, um, allowing specific users to gain access for a short period of time and this really is part of the uh, zero trust security model but we don't have an application for this example which is uh, integrated with Azure AD with specific roles assigned so we're trying to achieve a different approach here uh, where we just want to basically allow end users to to opt in or request access to an application um, so obviously that has uh, implications in terms of the time that we want to allow those users to to have access to to that uh, particular application now we created that 7-zip group so Azure AD is the same um, AD that you see within the uh, Microsoft Intune so we're going to select the group um, in order to do that I need to see all the groups um, so there you go I've got it got it there I'm going to select that group and by adding this in as a resource role it will mean that anyone opting in will be added to this group as part of the workflow process in order to achieve that I also need to select and make sure that the role is a member and then I'm going to move on into requests now specifically here you can um, users who can make you're determining which users can make the requ uh, request access now for me I just want users in the in your directory uh, in my directory but you could do uh, non uh, administrators administrator direct assignments only or for users not in your directory but specifically here I just want to use my own directory so the next option we have here is uh, we need to choose whether we want specific users and groups uh, we want to allow all members uh, excluding guests or all users excluding guests there um, so the difference obviously you've got all members the members being of this um, this resource uh, role or all users so all users within your directory I'm going to choose the specific group so for this particular test I'm going to select the marketing group now I know that the there are four uh, users in that group so I'm going to select that and that appears there and then we have uh, to determine whether for the approval where we, we want to require approval now this this is where we start building the the rules effectively for our workflow I want to select yes um, and require justification in this case I'm going to say yes because it might be an end user which um, 
inherently doesn't have access to the to download the application but I might want to give other users that that ability to justify that case so I'm going to put a justification in there and obviously I can choose either between one or two different stages I'm just going to have one and I'm going to have a first approver um, in this particular case I'm going to choose a specific user so I'm going to pick Andy as the approver let's select that so I got that in as the first approver now this next section uh, decision must be made in how many days um, basically if a request isn't approved within a time period after it's made um, then the, uh, the, the opt-in or the workflow is rejected okay so that's what that signifies and then I can decide whether um, I want to provide require approver justification in this case I don't I'm not going to provide that I'm just going to allow someone to opt in provide their justification um, and that will the end user or the manager uh, the specific approver I should say Andy Jones will make that decision do I then want to allow, allow enable new requests so I do want to do that okay next we're going to move on to the requester information and in this section I can uh, provide the question that will come up when someone requests access so um, I'm going to write and I'm going to need to um, choose the format and do it as a short text okay then we can move on to the life cycle so this section will determine the uh, number of days hours or a specific date um, when the access package assignment will expire I'm going to choose never for this particular case and um, I'm going to leave the access reviews to uh, no for the time being I'm going to select no then we can move on to the rules so for rules here I'm going to leave it as default I'm not going to add any rules but basically a rule contains as it says an event that and triggers a previously defined custom custom flow now I don't have that for this particular type of workflow so I'm going to leave that blank I can then head into review and create make sure that I've um, defined the details I need to as part of this access package and then I'm going to hit the create button it will validate my package and then it will create it and that completes the configuration we need to do so all that leads us to do is test this out so that concludes uh, part one of our configuration for access packages here uh, take a look at part two where we'll go through the testing and show this working thanks very much for now and see you again soon